Symbols can be quite ordinary things. The logo of some corporation, a button on your phone, even street sign. Sometimes creatures are symbols. The lion for courage, the raven for hidden knowledge, the lamb for meekness and sacrifice. Yet the most powerful symbols and the most difficult to understand are the creations of men and women from a time so long ago there is no record of their names. Before there was the written word, there were symbols crafted by the hands of those we would rightly call sorcerers or witches. Though some of these symbols may be almost mundane to us now, they began imbued with power. This is an attempt to trace the origins of one such symbol, known to us commonly today as the Triskelion or Triskele. How old is it? Where did it come from? And what did it mean to those who created it? What is the Triskelion. Hi friends, I'm Kevin McLean. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and consider supporting this channel through Patreon, PayPal, or through YouTube Super Stickers. Much thanks to all of my friends who help support this channel. Many believe the Triskelion to be a purely Celtic symbol due to its frequent use by modern lovers of Celtic culture and history. While certainly used extensively by the Celts, one can also find it further afield. In our own time, the flag of the Isle of Man is the most obvious carrier of the importance of this symbol. Its three-legged form appears to have been inspired by Sicilian Greek examples and adopted sometime in the 13th century. And it's from this Greek form that the symbol gets its name, Triskeles, three-legged or the diminutive form, Triskelion. Yet the names extended to cover all similar symbols with three extensions, some of which are, in my opinion, proper Triskelion, and others are not. Many well-known and beautiful examples originate from the Celtic Iron Age artifacts and sites. Numerous pre-Roman artifacts from Gaul, Britain, and Iberia feature the symbol. Examples are most numerous in the Celtic Iron Age, yet it's argued that the symbol predates the Celts. It may, but the argument for its existence in Western Europe before the Celts is somewhat more shaky than it first appears. It's argued that the oldest Triskelion is found in Ireland, in Newgrange, within the ancient burial chamber, dating to the Neolithic period. However, strictly speaking, this is not exactly a Triskelion. It's a triple spiral. While many have associated it with the Triskelion, it isn't clear that this symbol is actually related to the late Bronze Age Triskelion. It's also rather a one-of-a-kind, appearing as an isolated symbol only on this stone, which is called the Three Spiral Stone by archaeologists. Now, some spiral symbols at the entrance of Newgrange come somewhat close to also resembling this, but are even less akin to an actual symmetrical triskelium. One possible purpose of the many swirl and maze designs by Neolithic peoples may have been the entrapment of wandering spirits in near-infinite loops. Such ideas are recorded from much later folklore practices across Europe, such as forcing vampires to endlessly count objects in their graves to ensure that they stayed there. In France and Iberia, the Neolithic prior to the arrival of Indo-Europeans was also dominated by cup and ring and spiral carvings, very likely originating from the same types of traditions as the Anatolian farmers who made up the majority of the population in Western Europe at that time. And while occasionally a design will come close to resembling a Triskelion. It seems as much out of random chance than as a coherent symbol with an independent meaning. And whatever the intention of the artists involved, if the triple swirl in Ireland was intended as a holistic symbol or just a hodgepodge of frequently produced swirls, it was not commonly produced by the Neolithic inhabitants of Ireland and there is no actual connection between that symbol and the later Celtic Triskelion. This is because there is perhaps 2,000 years 
between the carving of that symbol and the earliest other known Triskelion in Western Europe. The Triskelion doesn't seem to have been used by the Bell Beaker people of the Chalcolithic or early Bronze Age Western Europe. It also doesn't appear in Bronze Age Nordic rock art. In both cases, it is the wheel symbol that's ubiquitous, most often with four spokes. Though I don't know of a surviving example from the likely Proto-Celtic Urnfield culture. There are some hints in some of the surviving artifacts that suggest they may have used it. Though they continued to embellish the wheel symbol, often together with a boat and waterfowl, an examination of one of their well-preserved swords shows the double swirl. The design of the sword, as well as the artistic embellishment, quickly strikes one as being very similar to patterns found among Mycenaean Greeks. And it isn't the only thing that demonstrates this. The designs of many of their prestige goods and weapons are similar. Both produce nearly identical ornamental sheet gold, embellished with nearly identical circular patterns. The Mycenaean symbolic catalog also includes other symbols commonly found with other Indo-European groups, such as the six-petaled flower, identical to that used thousands of years later by Celtic, Germanic, and Slavic peoples. We know that these groups must have maintained some kind of connections via the tin and amber trade, but it's also possible that they were influencing each other in more significant ways than are generally realized. Connections to the Mycenaeans is an important factor because it's with them that we have the earliest examples of a clear Triskelion, dating to around 1400 BC. A marvelous golden cup features a repeating pattern very similar to some later Celtic examples. Now if the Mycenaeans invented this symbol or obtained it from elsewhere, it's not certain. But I have not come across a convincing example of an earlier representation. Some believe that it may have been inspired by a fossilized creature known as the Tribrachidum. Such fossils exist in Ukraine, which Mycenaeans may have had some contact with based on Homeric myth, but it's entirely possible that this is an artistic creation. Now, In the relative Dark Age during the collapse of the Mycenaean civilization, much of the old Mycenaean art dies, but the symbol reappears, at least by the time of Proto-Corinthian style pottery around 650 BC. It became especially popular among the Greeks in Sicily, a place of importance it retains today. And it's through a rather complex web of elite connections that this Triskelion from Sicily becomes the basis of the flag of the Isle of Man, a more recent example of a borrowing of a Greek symbol. Now, of course, we can't know for sure that the Urnfield or Halstatt culture borrowed the Triskelion from the Greeks. It could have just gone unrepresented in preserved art, but the timeline of known artifacts suggests that it may have been borrowed. The Celts of Gaul also borrowed Greek writing and used it prior to the Roman occupation. They borrowed examples of Greek coins and other Greek artifacts, and so that they may have borrowed a single symbol shouldn't be a surprise. By the early Latin period, this symbol becomes extremely frequent, one of the most frequently used symbols across all the different Celtic groups, which is why it's still viewed as the quintessential Celtic symbol, and becomes at least as popular as the Bronze Age wheel, if not more so. The Castro culture, formed through Celtic invasions into Iberia in the late Bronze Age, used the symbol extensively, carving many fine examples into stone, as well as producing many beautiful artifacts featuring it. However, it's important to note that its popularity was not restricted only to the Celts. It also was later used by various Germanic groups, very likely through their contact with the Latin and later Roman art, which utilized it also from Celtic examples. Now, we can postulate that the increased use of the Triskelion in the Iron Age reflects a Celtic 
cosmology that was developing an increased interest in triplification. Gaulish art depicts some gods in a triplified fashion. And this is also supported by Gaelic legends, which often feature gods having exactly three children, or sometimes explicitly said to have three forms. Both Gaelic and Welsh bards produced lore books called triads, where everything of a topic is listed in threes, such as the three best mountains, the three best war horses, the three golden shoemakers, etc. There is also a triad, of the gods that appears in Gaelic, and in accounts from Gaul. Totatus, Essus, and Toranus are sacrificed to via drowning, hanging, and burning. There is perhaps some similarity with Gaelic Nuada, Dagda, and Lu. However, I think it's unlikely that such a triad itself is behind the significance and meaning of the Triskelion, but rather emphasizes the importance placed in the sacredness of three, and gives a further reason why they favor this symbol over perhaps others such as the swastika. We can perhaps get a better understanding of the symbol through its later uses. It was found frequently on sword hilts, and in the Greek world, it is most frequently found depicted on shields in pottery, including on the shield of Athena, which was believed to be Zeus's Aegis shield. Now, generally, the Aegis was depicted with the face of a gorgon, but the name of the shield means a violent windstorm and comes etymologically from the Greek Aeso, meaning to rush violently, related to Kataigis, meaning thunderstorm. Could it be that the symbol in relation to Zeus's Aegis is depicting motion? In the earliest Mycenaean examples, it seems to be artistically depicting exactly this. Doubtless, it was believed to carry protective power as well. The sense of motion is likely behind the Greek choice to often depict the symbol as three connecting legs. In at least some Iron Age Celtic examples, the symbol appears to also depict movement, and possibly wind specifically, appearing sometimes beneath the legs of horses. Some of the Iron Age examples feature the symbol within a circular outer rim, so that it in fact looks to depict a wheel in motion with the spokes blurring as they go around. While it was certainly also believed to carry a protective quality, it may be that the symbolic underlying meaning is to depict motion, which could be the wind, eddies, or waves on the sea, running or the rolling of a wheel. Anyhow, let me know your thoughts. What do you think that the Triskelion is representing? Leave your comments below. Thank you all for listening, and as always, stand tall.